What is up, y'all? Welcome back to your favorite talk show, Ask Ellie. This is my live business show where you guys call in and ask me real questions about your business, how to build wealth, and just about your life. I want this to be a space where you, the audience, can learn from other real entrepreneurs and also get some of your own questions answered based on how they're asking their questions on the show. I am super excited to provide this to you all. And yes, you guys know that I love to give, I love to teach, I love to be able to share this journey with you all. So make sure that you guys always are locked in and go to my website to sign up for the next taping of Ask Ellie so that you too can have your questions featured on the show. So without further ado, let's hop right into Ask Ellie. Answers to the questions that you need. That you need. Get the information so that you can plant a seed. To grow your wealth and build a legacy. Need help trying to build? Just ask Ellie. Alrighty y'all, so welcome back to another episode. Shout out to our amazing audience. I am just super proud of you guys. The fact that you are here, you're open, you're vulnerable to ask your questions. You know, one of the key things about becoming successful is never being afraid to ask a question. Never being afraid to admit that you don't know it all, that I don't know it all. There's, It's not possible for any one person to have all of the information. So the fact that you guys are here to ask a question is so, so good and is really going to help you go even further in your business. So let's see who we have up first today. All right, Jessica. Jessica, talk to me, girl. What questions do you want to ask Ellie? Hi, Ellie. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Thank you for being here. Where are you calling in from? Fort Hood, Texas. Texas in the house. Okay, okay. Well, tell me about your business. What questions do you have? Okay, so my question is, I provide um, services for the government as an independent contractor. For mm -hmm. um, I'm a homeschool educator for children, specifically children with autism. And wow. I also provide like some financial literacy um help for soldiers and self-care advocate for like military wives so my question is i'm the the dod they provide me with my own ein number okay but since i operate like a home-based business do i still have the same benefits as if i had my own llc Ooh, so here's what I would definitely say. And Jessica, this is a great question. And thank you for what you do. That is so special that you work with um, children that may be autistic or special needs. R real heroes don't wear capes and you are a real hero. So what I would definitely say is if you don't have an LLC right now, and let me just get clear on that, Jessica, do you have an LLC in this moment? No, okay, girl, sis, everybody, let's hold Jessica's hand. Jessica, you need an LLC, okay? We need an LLC, and that is because all these great things we talk about on Ask Ellie, and if you follow me on other platforms, you know I'm always talking to you guys about building business credit, being able to access funding. You won't be able to do that without an LLC. So we definitely wanna make sure that you start there. Go ahead and form the business. So whatever business name you've been currently operating under, make it official and get that LLC. That's also gonna help you get a business bank account, which can then help you get access to more funding. Now, I understand that you already have an EIN and that's okay, but what I would definitely say is you want to ensure that when you form your LLC, if it does not have the same name as what is available on your EIN, you're going to call the IRS, just their EIN department, not the whole tax IRS. And you wanna make an update to the business name that you have reflected. That way they match. So you don't necessarily need to go get a new EIN number since you already have history with that one, but you do need to have an LLC in order to properly use that EIN. So now once you have the LLC, again, you can get the business bank account, you can start building business credit, you can get better tax write-offs, you can get funding if you wanna scale this up and open your own you know, um, company or rather open your own location. So many things you can do when you actually have that LLC. 
um, and also start selling products directly to people. So that's something you want to do ASAP. And I have a few businesses registered in the state of Texas. It isn't too complicated to do there. You can do it right online with their, <coughs> excuse me, with their Secretary of State. And it's going to take about two weeks or so for you to get that approved. Now, I want to ask you, Jessica, is there any particular reason why you haven't gotten an LLC yet? No, no, it's just I I wasn't too sure. Okay. I've been following you for a while now. Um, so I wasn't, it just, I wasn't sure about exactly what I needed to, to do. And since I'm technically, you know, employed by the government i wasn't too sure got it got it got it yes so and that's okay you know it's good that you're asking the question and since you are employed you can still have an llc as an employee right you can still have your own business you can still go ahead and build business credit that would just make a difference like if the government pays you on a w-2 then that would be separate but when you have your LLC, if other people want to pay you, like if I wanted to hire you or if someone in our audience wanted to hire you to homeschool, then they could pay you to your business, okay? So that would be a key thing. That way you have it in two places and now you're able to make more money because you can still keep your job, but you can also have that business on the side and make that money. So we're definitely excited for you, Jessica, and I'm going to be following up with you. I'm going to tell my team to remind me to check in with you and see if you got that LLC by next month, okay? <laughs> awesome. That's such a good question. And it looks like we've got another amazing audience member. Steph, talk to me, girl. What question do you want to ask Ellie? Hey, Ellie. Thanks for having me on the show. You know I'm calling from Orlando. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for being in here. I'm super excited, too. I'm proud of you. Okay. Thank you so much. So my question, I'll make it quick. It doesn't have to be specifically to Black Friday, but when you do your sales, how do you determine what your sales is going to be and what discount you're going to offer but still remain profitable and the reason i ask is because as a business that may not be making as many sales as i want to yeah i still want to get on the bandwagon with the sales but i also want to make money so what's your advice for someone like me Mmm, so you want to be able to take advantage of some of the good sales and buy people's sales and you also want to have your own stuff on sale is that right Yes, but I, I want to, uh, my business, I want to offer sales so that way I can generate more income, um, more sales, more audience and all that stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's such a great question. And you know, Black Friday, you guys, is the biggest consumer spend day of the year. And it can feel pretty intimidating as a business owner to, you know, create something that people will want to buy on this day where so much money is circulating. There's literally money in the air on Black Friday. And, you know, my recommendation is this, even if your business is new, if it's not making what you currently want it to make, still put an offer out. And what I recommend doing is there may be someone in your audience who's been thinking about buying from you, but he hasn't really been sure, or they keep forgetting, you know, something is just limiting them from going through and making that step. But a great Black Friday offer, like a 50% off, literally removes all the hesitation. So what Black Friday can do, even if you're a newer business, is give you that opportunity to get some of those first few sales or those next few sales. Because of the fact that it's such a no-brainer, that person who was thinking about buying last week but didn't, when they see the offer next time, they're like, you know what, 50% off? I cannot miss this. So one of the best ways to prepare for days like Black Friday and other big sale days like Cyber Monday, Christmas is also a good time, after Christmas and then New Year's sales, really good sales at the end of the year. The way to prepare for it is to really go into overdrive on your content and your marketing. So you wanna make sure that people are aware and know about your product and your service and how it's gonna help them at least two weeks before your offer drops. So, or a week, right? A week before your offer drops. So that that way, when you start telling them that this is coming, 
they're not only getting you know antsy for the fact that they're gonna get 50% off people love a sale but they're also like hmm I do need something like that like I do need this shirt or I do need this shea butter or I do need this coaching call because of the fact that you're starting to kind of bring attention to it and I will tell you this even though Black Friday is that specific day sales run until the beginning of December right so even if you haven't gotten straight into all of your marketing in advance of black friday you've got cyber monday you've really got all the way up until like december 5th where people are still buying you know they're still buying they're still looking for the best deals so you want to create a lot of awareness on your content with your content with your marketing get them to know and then make that offer so irresistible that anyone who was kind of doubting before is like oh there's no way I can let this 50% off or 60% off go. And another pro tip I have for you, Steph, even if you don't actually make the price 60% off what your price is, remember the customer only knows what you show them. So if the price of your product is $50, but you don't necessarily wanna go all the way down to 25 because that's gonna cut your profit margins. Before your Black Friday sale, you can have your product priced at $150 so that when you do that 50% off, it is still less, but you protected your margins. So now you made sure that you still come out on a good end and your customer has the benefit because they're like, oh, I just got 50% off, right? So that's kind of a key thing. So make sure you raise your price far enough in advance to where they don't really remember if it used to be any other price other than that. And then you prepare yourself for Black Friday to do that 50%. So then it's really like, oh, I got a great deal. You think you could do that stuff? You should see me over here. I don't know if you can see all my head nodding <laughs> and all that. Like, I knew you was, you always told the sauce. Thank you, thank you, thank the you, thank sauce, you. Thank the you. Sauce. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. So I cannot wait to see what you put together. It's going to be great. So that's a good tip, y'all. I'm telling you, anytime you want to think about doing a great sale, but you don't want to mess up your profit margins, you know, start to raise that price in advance. So then by the time you do the sale, you're still coming out on a good end and your customer still feels like, oh, I just got a deal. And that's, that's a win-win, right? We wanna have happy customers. Good, good question. And Sarah has a question, and I can see you with your beautiful baby in the picture. Super excited to have you. What question do you wanna ask, Ellie? Hi, Ellie. Thank you so much for having me. I've been following you for a while now. I've been on a call with you. I am on the Facebook groups with you, like I'm everywhere with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, please. I have a question. My question is, um, I have a, a Airbnb because of you. I have three Airbnbs. Okay. I have my tracking. And now I'm starting a, a share butter business starting early next year. Wow. But my problem is I do, I'm from Ghana and I do not, in Ghana, they do not teach us how to use uh, the computer in schools. Oh, so wow. it's kind of like when you grow up, you have to go learn it yourself. Yes. So me, yeah, finding myself here and I know, that, okay, the uh, computer takes you uh, like places. How do I start going? Today, I've called so many IT schools, but when I explain <laughs> my situations to them, they are like, oh, I'll go to YouTube or anything <laughs> like that and learn. <laughs> so I do not know how to uh, like uh, put up content yeah. and uh, links, all those things. I do not know how to do that. So yeah, I wanted your advice on where to start from. Absolutely. And, uh, my, yeah, my second question would be like how to build a team for my business. Because every successful business will have to have a team. Yes. So how do I build that team for my business? Since I was not born here and I just got here, I do not have friends. I only have myself and my husband. So how do I build that team? Yes. Wow, those are such great questions. And congratulations to you on three Airbnbs, the trucking. Oh, that's amazing. That makes me happy. It makes me know that 
What I'm doing is working, y'all. It's working. People out here winning, so I love it. So that's a great question. And in regards to not knowing how to do, you know, a ton of things on the computer, I can definitely relate. Like, I didn't study anything, websites, coding, anything like that in school, just basic knowledge. And I would say for you, a great resource that you can use to actually solve both of your problems. So you mentioned wanting to be able to understand more of how to do things on the computer um, for your business. And then as well, you mentioned having a team. So what I'm gonna recommend to you is to actually hire someone on fiverr.com now the reason i mentioned fiverr specifically is because it's a lot more affordable so going out and hiring like a full-time you know graphic designer who can set up your flyer set up your website do all your links that can be really expensive but on sites like fiverr.com or upwork you can hire someone for ten dollars an hour fifteen dollars an hour or even less they will charge you just for the specific project so you might pay hundred and fifty dollars for someone to design your website and guess what now you have that website done and the great thing about it is when those um, contractors do the work for you you're able to go back to them and say hey my business is new but can you make updates to my website every month for this flat fee a month right so you pay them once the 150 dollars to do the site and then if you say can you work 10 hours a month updating my site every time I need help and I can also make sure to pay you a hundred or two hundred dollars a month to get that done and that's only when it's comfortable for you right but to get started to get that first site completed girl trade the money for the time rather than feeling stressed on how am I going to learn it go ahead and set aside a hundred bucks Find someone to set up your Shopify store. That's gonna be the best platform for you to use to sell your shea butter and any type of e-commerce product you guys have. Shopify, Shopify, Shopify. So you're gonna to go to Fiverr, search for someone to set up your Shopify store. It should cost anywhere between $75 to $150. Get that set up. And then once you have it, now you can start looking at building a team. So for myself, I have a graphic designer that I consider a part of my team. I found him on Fiverr.com and I use him twice a month, right? And although he's not paid by the hour, every time I need a flyer, it's $35. But I consider that person on my team because that's the only one I reach out to. So you can create that same connection by finding one person to do the specific job, and then anytime you need other help with that, you go back to that person. Now, as you start to scale your business and as it starts to make more money, then you can actually hire on sites like LinkedIn. I would also recommend onlinejobs.ph. Now, this is going to connect you guys with um, employees that are in the Philippines, but I will tell you it's amazing. You get great quality service and it's not expensive. So you can hire an assistant, for example, to do work for you at 20 to 40 hours a week. And that could be $500 a month, which is whoa, 40 hours a week here in the US minimum. You probably have to pay someone 2000 to $3,000. So this is a huge win and you are able to do that to get that one person on your team. Then as you make more money, get the next person. Um, and that's really key, you know, because as you're building your business, you don't want all your money to go towards paying people, but you do want to spend a strategic amount of money to get things done that you can't do. So that way you're able to move forward. So hire someone ASAP. And a great question that comes up for me about this is, when you do hire someone, don't be concerned about them taking your ideas because when you go through platforms like Fiverr, that protection is built in. So when you hire someone there, that protection of them not being able to take your idea is automatic. And if they ever did, you would have the right to sue them. So just a heads up there. Nobody better see you in court, okay? <laughs> but you definitely got this, Sarah. I'm very proud of you and your husband and the family that you're building. You've made amazing progress, and I know you're going to figure out these next steps, too.
So, so Thank dope. Thank you so much. You are welcome, girl. <laughs> And let me see here. We've got Jacqueline. Jacqueline, talk to me, girl. What questions hey, do you want to ask, Thank Ellie? you for having me on your show. I'm so excited. I am so excited, too. Where are you calling in from? I'm from, I'm from California. Hey, me, too. I'm in L.A. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so tell me about your business. What questions do you have? Okay, so I have my own TV network. Okay, okay. and I am... I am trying to create content for women, and my question is, how would you create content to attract women to your Instagram and also your YouTube for your own TV network without having any content launched on your network? With any content launched? Mm. Yeah. So well. How would you, how would, like, if I'm, I'm stuck, like. <laughs> yes. I can understand. Well, let me ask you this. What type of TV network is it? What type of shows are going to be on this network? So basically like a bunch of podcasts, you know, like different things that women love to do. You know, we love to talk. Okay. Okay. We love to talk. We love to be like little shows, like love short clips and stuff like that. Okay. I really like that. Well, here's the best piece of advice I would give you. Yes, girl. And you can sign me onto the network, honey child. <laughs> but here is the best piece of advice that I would give you. Um, number one, I would say what you just explained to me about what is going to be on your network. And you said, oh, you know, women, we love to talk. We want to hear love stories. We love this. That's going to start drawing people in. So even if you don't have the clips yet to show what each show, TV show, is going to be like on your network, you can talk about what's coming. And you can say, coming up on, you know, uh, Jacqueline Networks, we are going to be having a whole love series. Because ladies, I know y'all want to figure out where is this next man at. I know y'all want to understand why is he playing so much. So make sure when the show drops in 2023 or whenever that you're locked in. And that's going to get people engaged and excited. Even if they can't quite see a clip yet, you talking about what is coming and you talking about what and why it's going to matter for them is great. And another thing that you can definitely do is when you start to promote do some lives, do some mock episodes where maybe you film yourself on YouTube, you film yourself with your camera, you go live and bring on some guests who may or may not end up in some of the shows and talk about these things. So do a live all about relationships. And then your call to action there is, you, if you guys love this, our next you know, show on this or the next episode is gonna be hosted on this TV network. Make sure you guys subscribe, lock in so that you get notified. And that is an amazing way that you can really tease, you can really tease the show. So you think you can do that? Oh yes ma'am. Oh yes ma'am, because when you told me about the network, I got excited. So if you go and start telling other people about it with your bubbly personality, I know they are going to lock in. And I absolutely love that, you know, for those of you in the audience who have an idea, but you haven't, you know, done it yet, you don't have anything to show for it yet, you just have the idea, start talking about it, get people excited, let them know what to expect. And I will tell you, people will wait until they can see the final product. So you guys, it has been another amazing episode of Ask Ellie. You guys know I love being your business coach and your business bestie to really be able to answer your questions live about what you need, how life is going, how business is going, and so much more. So I want you guys to go to my academy, elevatedacademy.com, and make sure that you sign up for the next Ask Ellie show so that you could be featured and have a chance to ask me your question too. I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching the show. It is my absolute pleasure to bring you this value and answer your questions live. I want to make sure that you understand that in no way am I giving you financial advice. I always recommend that you hire a licensed or legal professional for any of your financial, tax, accounting, or business needs, okay? Thank you so much for watching the show, and we can't wait to see you on the next episode of Ask Ellie. Bye-bye.